We've seen a rise in the high-bit genre lately. That is, games that try to replicate the 16-bit art style of the Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis, but modernize it to current standards. The result is some of the most beautiful pixel art we've ever seen, and games that truly push the genre to its limits. 2016 was host to many of these games, but perhaps none are as important as one that took 9 years to develop. You know I'm talking about Owlboy. All it takes is one look at Owlboy to understand what I'm talking about. High-bit games bring old-school styles into the modern era. No longer are the days of squished dimensions or color palette limitations. And while some games like Shovel Knight try to emulate the systems of years past with pseudo-restrictions, Owlboy went all out in showing that pixel art is far from dead. The scenery is breathtaking, and the care put into every frame of animation is so apparent here. I can't help but sit in awe when I see these cutscenes. I mean, just look at them! Soundtracks don't have limitations anymore either, so Owlboy uses a full orchestra to bring this skybound world to life. But it also throws in some chiptune songs as well, to bridge the gap between the past and the present. In fact, this is what Owlboy seems to do best, reminding you of certain elements it borrows from while improving them to make it their own. I can see all sorts of influences in this game, from Metal Slug and the way enemies explode and how you shoot, to Paper Mario with its different party members and their variety of abilities, to Zelda-inspired dungeons and puzzles. Heck, it even reminds me of Ori in the Blind Forest with its focus on vertical level design. Since you are an owl boy, you can fly wherever you'd like. So rather than worrying about the potential for breaking their designs, the developers use this to their advantage. Instead of traversing perilous platforms, you'll be cruising around narrow pathways and big open corridors grabbing items to use, or shooting things with your buddy. Most puzzles have a unique spin to them, like carrying clouds to fill these basins with water while avoiding wind tunnels that could suck them up, or making this electric boss plug himself into a socket to cause an overload. The game will also occasionally limit your flying ability, yet it does so in creative ways. Like with a waterfall that pushes you down, gnomes that will hear you if you flap your wings, or high altitude where the air is too thin to fly. There's even Metroidvania elements of opening up earlier pathways to speed up backtracking, or using gained abilities to enter new areas. But by far the game's biggest strength is its pacing. Owlboy switches up the gameplay all the time and never gets stale. This game has it all. It's an action adventure and a puzzle game, but it's also a stealth game straight out of Metal Gear. Man, for 30 seconds, it's a freaking runner game. One minute, you're given a special partner for a brief time to use her crutch to knock away bombs. The next, you're riding a giant lava snake to escape an exploding cavern. It always kept me guessing and I had no idea what was coming next. Unlike most games like this, there isn't an obvious blueprint for your journey. Instead of, you must get the eight keys from the eight different castles to complete your quest. It's like, hey, let's chase this troublemaker. Oh man, pirate invasion! Hmm, we'd better look for clues in this temple. Oh no, the city is blowing up! While there is a set path and key plot devices to gather, you won't know it until further into the story. And there's so many twists and turns along the way that it's engaging the entire time and never overstays its welcome. It'll even take overused gaming tropes and flip them on their head. Like the, this may be the last time we fight together, better make sure you're prepared thing, but then it turns out you're fine and still have a third of the game left. It's pretty hilarious. To top it all off, I was pleasantly surprised by a deep story, and I think it works in tandem with the pacing to make it really shine. Owlboy is not the typical protagonist discovers he's a true hero and saves the world kind of story. This is a protagonist realizes he's just normal and that's okay, but he also saves the world kind of story. Right from the get-go, you're constantly berated for your mistakes. Your mentor puts you down every step of the way and won't let your faults go. Like, there's this part where you're supposed to put the water jug on this pedestal, and at first I thought it wanted me to throw it by lining up the trajectory arc. But then the jug breaks and I feel like an idiot. Of course, what was I thinking? I should have just set it down. But then when I played again, I did set it down as softly as I could and the jug still broke. So it's like, what do you want from me, man? Stop yelling at me, I did the best I could. And this is where I started to realize the plight of the main character, Otis. He's a mute and is made fun of for it causing him to have insecurities and anxiety that eats him up inside. But the friends he makes along the way are outcasts just like him. From a clumsy, stuttering bookworm, to a stick bug that dresses up as a spider because it makes himself feel cooler. You don't overcome your disability, you don't gain incredible strength or prowess, but instead rely on your friends and teamwork to overcome the obstacles that stand in your way. We're about to get into some spoilers, so if you want to skip ahead, click here. 
Captain Molstrom is one of the most intimidating villains I've ever seen, and I couldn't wait to fight him in the end. Well, it turns out you never do, and at first I was disappointed. But then I realized, like, duh, of course you can't fight him. This guy is ridiculous, he would kill you in one hit. And I mean, he kinda does, and you have to use supernatural means to be revived. Otis is never a great warrior, but he cares for his friends. And even though he can't voice it, he does everything he can to protect them. It's incredibly touching, and just another great reason why this game stands out amongst a sea of other pixel art adventure titles. Now what's interesting is that if you gather all the secret items and collectibles, you're rewarded with even more backstory and hidden lore. Getting the key for this room in Meso sheds some light on the Bongo Man's brother. And if you find all the secret emblems, you discover a lot more about the history of Owl Kind and how the world ended up in chaos. This game does a fantastic job of world building and expanding the narrative for those that want to find it. Every character is so much more than an NPC. They have a story to tell, and that's a really nice touch. Owlboy is such a delight to play, not just because of the mechanics and gameplay, but because of the emotional story it tells as well. It blends all of this together with the art and music so well that it's a package just oozing with charm. That's the charm, right there, see it? Please check it out if you haven't yet, you won't be disappointed. What I'm even more excited for, however, is the spark that's been lit for this type of game. A high bit revolution has begun, and even more titles like this one are on their way. So strap yourself in, it's gonna be a wild ride. If you want to see more about the high bit era, check out my friend Heavyide's video on it here. Or you can check out the Good Game Design series, where we analyze principles of what makes games great. Of course, you can always subscribe if you enjoyed, or show this video to a friend, that would be a great help too. And as always, you can support the show through Patreon. Thanks for watching, and stay frosty, my friends.